quick. Hey. Awesome. How are you? Uh, all right, bro. You know, long day, long day modern technology. Awesome. Awesome. Mm. Su super excited to have you back on. Hey, I'm excited to be here, bro. How are you? Uh, doing well, doing well. And, and, and Gary, you don't need a, uh, a big intro. I mean, you're one of the all time legends, one of my all time favorite uh, actors. Uh, I mean, you've been obviously in a ton of stuff over the folks that aren't familiar. I mean, you've played legends like Albert Anastasia, real life mobsters, you know, as well as like Maddie the Horse and the Deuce, my favorite show, Sopranos. Um, you work with some of the all time legends, uh, my favorite director, Martin Scorsese. Just, again, I can't just say how honored I am to have you back on to, to Movie Junk. Well, I enjoy talking to you. You're a gentleman and a scholar. And uh, yeah, we had a good time last time we spoke. So I'm, uh, I'm very happy to be back. Awesome. No, thank I'm you. I'm tired. I worked all week. Um, you know, it's Friday night. And usually uh, this time I'm already... You know, <laughs> Yeah, I know. Thank you. I know um, we have water, water, not a cocktail. I got an iced tea. Water. I got an iced tea, so we're, we're good. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, for the folks that didn't tune into our uh, our first session, I, I do want to uh, kind of, you know, give some of the fans an opportunity to kind of, uh, you know, hear how the journey all started. And I started my career back in 1980. Okay. 1980. Yeah, it's like my 41st year. Uh, in the business and you wear a lot of hats because I mean you not only are uh, an extraordinary actor but you're a writer director producer it's paid the bills you know um, it's been great because I've been on a uh, uh, film set every day for most of my life and to me it's better than film school and I did go to film school I did spend the money and I went to NYU and everything that I learned is, it's passe, you know. I learned on a 16 millimeter camera and now everything is digital. So I guess, you know, take it to the bank. I learned a lot more working on a set every day than I uh, could ever take from film school, I mean. Going to NYU, it looks great on a resume, but I really don't think that it's it, it's done anything um, to further my career along. I really don't believe that. Yeah. Um, were, were there any uh, any actors or, or movies that kind of inspired you to want to get into the business? Because from what I remember, our first uh, interview, you actually uh, did a little bit of modeling as well, too, before you did uh, acting. But were there any... Uh, actors or directors that kind of motivated you to get in the business? Yeah, Jack Nicholson and uh, Donald Sutherland were my uh, two favorites back at, at, in that time period, especially Jack Nicholson. And it just so happens that one of my first films out of the gate, he was in it and we hung out and it was, it was incredible. And the very first film I did, Maybe the second one had Donald Sutherland in it. So I met my two heroes in the first two films I did, and that was it. I was done. Gary, I can't, I can't let you sneak out of here without you know giving me one Jack Nicholson story because I mean he's, he's an all-time legend. Any any wild stories uh, from Jack that you could share? Yeah, Pritchie's honor. Um, he found out that I worked in a nightclub in Bay Ridge. And um, that I worked for a bunch of gangsters. And he was playing a gangster in Pritzi's honor. So he said to me one day, he goes, you think, uh, he goes, hey, Gary, he goes, uh, you know, you think, uh, think your friends would mind if I uh, maybe came by and hung out in the club? I don't know, Jack, I, I got to really run it by them. So the following day, I ran it by the honchos. And I said, Jack Nicholson. And they go, who's that? And I go, yeah, the, 
Jack Nicholson, the actor. I said, yeah, he wants to come by the club. They go, get Dolph out of here. I said, no, I'm not kidding. He wants to come by the club. He wants to like hang around you guys, you know, to get the, the gist. Yeah. Go, yeah, bring them by Monday night. Now, Monday nights, we used to meet, watch Monday night football. And there was a guy in the, in the back of the club that would make spaghetti, meatballs, whatever, everybody. I brought Jack there and I couldn't get him out. It was like three, four in the morning. And he's telling stories and he's cracking the guys up. The guys loved him. He loved them. And that's my best Jack story. And he and I were like pals after that. That's yeah, awesome. it was, yeah. yeah, it was cool. And you, you touched on, uh, you know, some of the, uh, the mob figures. I worked, I worked in a club in Bay Ridge that was probably the um, epitome of mob life. John Gotti and his crew used to come in all the time. Um, I served pretty much everybody back then. And uh, no, I, I didn't, believe me, on my days off, I wanted to hang out with, with my friends and not, you know, that element, basically. No yeah. offense to the element, but. Yeah. And what, what fans also, I mean, because a lot, a lot of your roles have been kind of more these, these mob-centric uh, roles, but, uh, you know, you also do uh, some comedy roles, too. I mean, The Week Of with uh, Adam Sandler and Chris Rock. And I, I, you're also really, really funny as well, too. So I, there's been kind of more of a shift to more comedic roles uh, recently as well, too. Do you have a preference, either or? or yeah, do that? I prefer to do comedy, and I prefer to do uh, uh, stuff that's not mob-related uh, because I can do that all the time. You know, I've already proven that. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to start doing more stuff outside the box, outside the typical typecast stuff. And uh, I want casting directors and producers and directors to see me in another light. I mean, listen, looking at me, somebody said the other day that you will always play an author, uh, author how they say, authoritarian type of a role somebody who's in charge, no matter what it is, in charge of a business, a, a corporation, uh, a head doctor, head FBI agent, head CIA, whatever it may be, it's gonna be hard for me to play the guy on the bottom rung of the ladder. And I get that, that's fine. Yeah. But I, I, I definitely want the opportunities to arise where I play a politician like I did week of I played a mayor or uh, you know something other than a mobster it's um I I think it sucks to be uh typecast and pigeonholed yeah just my opinion yeah and and, and this is a compliment too I mean because a lot of times you do play kind of these leader type roles in the mob is because you do have a very uh, dominating presence and it's intimidating too so you you do scare us uh, on screen what whether that's the real Gary or not uh, and again, I was I was a big fan of uh, the Deuce, and I, I love I love the mob element of that, especially that that period, you know, um, that it took place because uh, it was kind of a different side, uh, and, and just kind of jumping into the Deuce, it was a different side of the uh, the mafia, you know, just kind of going into kind of how um, the mob was involved in like the porn, uh, vending machines, and stuff like that, because that was a big stream of income, you know, for the mob too. So oh, I did kind of. You know, it's funny that you mention it. Um, one of the directors from the show, he was also a, a showrunner and a producer. He, uh, season two, day one, uh, I opened uh, the season. And it was, it was very uh, unnerving for me because all the HBO big wigs were there. Um, both the showrunners, Dave Simon and and George Pelicanos was there. And they wound up moving the scene that I was in up to the opening scene of the day of season two. I wasn't supposed to work till probably the fifth day. 
and they moved the schedule up and I wound up being the first team of the new season. And, uh, you know, I, I did this scene a couple of times and um, director said to me, he goes, uh, Gary, take it down about 40%. And I said, why? He goes, because you don't have to do a lot to get your point across. And I don't know if you remember the episode. Uh, it's when I go into the, uh, the gay bar and I shake down Chris Coy. And, um, you know, I shake him down um, for payola. Yeah. And after I saw it, he was right. You know, I really, it was one of those scenes where less is more. And uh, now I, I, I abide by that. Yeah, no, that's, that, I remember that scene, um, you know, is because that's when you come in with the two guys and you, you know, you're, you're shaking them down in the bar. And, exactly. Yep. Yeah. And I'd love to talk about um, Last Call, which opens on March 19th. Yeah. On, um, you can see it on uh, Amazon Prime. And it's going to open in about 150 theaters. Uh, if you, I don't know what's theater. going on in LA, but the theaters are open here. So if you can get out and get to a movie, March 19th, it's called Last Call. It stars Jeremy Piven, Bruce Dern, Taryn Manning, uh, my friend Zach. And uh, super excited because that comes out uh actually as you mentioned it's coming out next week and fans are going to be able to see that in uh, in theaters as well too is it also going to be on video on demand uh, as well or just just theater release initially yeah i think so but um i think the biggest station you'll see it on right now is um what do you call um it was on prime oh perfect too yeah yeah super and see that and this book I wrote called Distress, based on the film I did of the same name, is now available on my website at www.garypastor.com forward slash shop. Yeah. And I suggest I suggest people read it. It's a, it's a really good book. I mean, it deals with mental health and staying positive and trying to live a stress-free life, which in these times is uh, pretty difficult. So, um, yeah, I got a lot going on right now. And um, as I told you, as soon as something really fascinating comes up, you'll be one of my first calls. Absolutely. But, uh, I'm, I'm really happy about um, Last Call. Uh, it's getting a lot of buzz. Yeah. I heard it may be the sleeper hit of the year. So go see it. Yeah, no, March 19th. Yeah, I'm super excited to see it. And uh, yeah, we're going to definitely share uh, the link uh, to your book as well, too. Because uh, again, this was a movie that, I mean, a documentary that you worked on a few years back that's now uh, that you wrote. Um, and actually uh, releases a book as well too. Were there? I know these are some unique times, but uh, was there any uh, added motivation to you know like why why was now the right time to uh, release the book? I actually started writing it right after the movie was released, and I kept putting it down and picking it up, and I I finally got a chance to finish it because I was off for seven months during the COVID uh, nightmare. I had that time. So instead of sitting home and complaining, like a lot of people did, I, uh, I put it to good use. My philosophy now and everybody's philosophy, philosophy should be that, uh, you know, don't, don't spend your time idly um, and keep a positive outlook. Everybody looked at this COVID epidemic like it was a bad thing. And I, I didn't, I used it to uh, better myself. Um, I figured what can I do that would be a positive uh, influence and finishing the book was number one. I finished the screenplay was number two. 
and I uh, set my sights on the future. Instead of dwelling on uh, what's bad, I, uh, I focused on what's good. And that's what I think most people should do. You know, if, if I was to give advice right here, right now, it would be to be more positive and have more positive energy in your life and take that and spread it around and stop being uh, negative because dwelling in negativity will never get you anywhere, especially in, in this industry. I know that for a fact. Yeah. That's it. Definitely. No. And I, I definitely agree. And now that was my kind of thought process was, you know, during this, you know, time that we had where we were locked down is you got all these creative minds, you know, kind of, you know, sheltered. My, my thought process was in the next few years, what content are we going to get from folks like you, uh, other writers, uh, you know, the, the, the scripts that we're going to get that are being created now, the movies that we're going to get in the future. So I'm super excited to read your book. Uh, glad that you use this time uh, wisely to, uh, to to release something that you're extremely passionate about. And um, mm -hmm. as Gary mentioned, you know, it's on his website, GaryPastor.com. Go to the shop section or slash shops. We'll also share the link as well, too. So, uh, yeah, excited to, uh, to, to to hear more uh, you know, fan reactions and uh, seeing this released. And the last call with Jeremy Piven as well. And honored that, uh, you know, we will definitely uh, get some time to uh, to sync up, you know, once the, uh, the movie gets out as well. Yeah, and after you read the book, I'd love to hear your opinion. I really would. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll, we'll have it over here. We'll have it over here in the, uh, the, the spot there too. So now again, Gary, thank you very much. Want to be respectful of your time. I know it's the, uh, the weekend and uh, My pleasure, man. My pleasure, man. Great seeing you again. Great to see you again. Too. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Take care. You too. Bye-bye.